Hey everyone, Michael Park here for CreativeCow.net. Every now and again I need to create a 3D world for some of my video projects. Typically I'll go into a 3D application like 3D Studio Max or Maya and create an actual 3D world. Now with After Effects we don't necessarily need to do that. We can create a realistic 3D world right inside After Effects using nothing more than the built-in plugins. Let's go ahead and clear out the project here and start from scratch. We'll go Composition, New Composition. We'll be working at NTSC DV1 widescreen square pixel preset, 29 frames a second, with a duration of 30 seconds. We'll call this Final Comp. The reason why I chose 30 seconds is I want the Earth to revolve one full revolution every 30 seconds so we create a loopable animation. Anything faster than 30 seconds the Earth looks like it would spin too quickly and everybody would just fly off. Alright, now we need to go ahead and import our textures we'll be using so I'm going to double click the project area and bring in all the textures that I provided in the project file. You can get these from the creativecow.net website where you found the video tutorial. Now these textures are actually what we call spherical projections. That is a rectangular texture which when mapped to a sphere will create an accurate representation of the 3D world. Back in our final comp, since we've already had this pre-comped, we'll go ahead and name this Earth Pre-Comp and we'll drag it down into the final composition. As you see it's still a large rectangular texture. To make it into a realistic 3D world we need to apply the CC Sphere modifier. So go to Effect, Perspective, CC Sphere. And as you can see, it takes that rectangular projection and wraps it around the sphere to create a world. If you'll twirl down your rotation parameters and look at the Y rotation, this is what we'll be animating to make the world spin on its axis. But as you know, the world has more than just landmass. It also has clouds. And fortunately, we've also provided a cloud map. We'll drag this into a new composition to pre-comp it. And we'll name it Earth Clouds Pre-Comp. Now, you don't necessarily have to pre-compose these, but for some of the steps we'll be doing later, it just makes a little more sense. Drag the cloud pre-comp on top of the Earth pre-comp and apply CC Sphere again. Now, the Earth pre-comp I made was a radius of 200. That's kind of an arbitrary value. You can use whatever you want depending on the size of your composition. Regardless of the size you make the Earth pre-comp, you need to make the cloud pre-comp slightly larger so that you'll have an accurate representation of the clouds going around the Earth slightly off the Earth's surface. So we'll switch this, in our case, to 202. In looking at this, you'll notice that you cannot see through the clouds onto the Earth. We can take care of this easily by changing the mode from normal to screen. Now you can see we've got the clouds on top of the earth exactly the way we want it. We're starting to get there, but not quite yet. What we're really lacking is some atmosphere. No, I'm not talking about the atmosphere in a jazz club. I'm talking about the stuff you can breathe. We're going to fake this by using just simply a solid layer. So if you go layer, new, solid, we need to bring up kind of a light blue color. So we'll come in here and pick something around. That should work nicely. Hit OK and we'll call this Atmosphere. Now with the layer selected apply Effect CC Sphere. And the atmosphere needs to be slightly larger than actually the cloud files. So set the radius of this up to 205. Next thing we need to do is adjust the opacity of the atmosphere and we'll go up here to the transfer modes and change it to screen as well. Starting to look a little bit better. One of the other things we need to do is adjust the shading. As you can see the way the light is coming in or onto these spheres it's actually hitting about three quarters of the way around. That's fine for the cloud layer and the landmass layer but it looks a little strange for the atmosphere so we'll make some adjustments. Under the light dialog box of CC Sphere change the light height from 40 to 20 and twirl down the shading dialog box as well. We need to adjust the ambience. Now ambience is the light that is shown on the dark side or where the light is not striking. We can turn that down to zero because we actually don't want any any light bleeding around there. 
Finally, with the atmosphere, you see there is a sharp edge here, uh, which we don't want. In real life, the atmosphere kind of bleeds off or gradually gets lighter and lighter as you go away from the Earth's surface because the density of the atmosphere gets uh, less and less uh, as you go towards space. To simulate this, we're going to actually add a blur layer to this. So with the atmosphere layer still selected, go Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Fast Blur. And we'll turn up the blur settings to about 15. And as you can see, we created a nice gradient here to represent the atmosphere. Zooming back out, you can see we're starting to get a realistic look. Now one of the things I want to take care of right now is there's still a lot of ambience on the cloud layer and on the earth layer, which I don't really want. So we'll go back into the CC Sphere settings of the cloud precomp and go to the shading and turn the ambience down. Similarly, we'll go to the earth precomp, go into the shading and turn the ambient down there too. So now it bleeds off into pure darkness. Great. Next we'll turn our attention to making the Earth rotate. And the way I'm going to do this is to create a new adjustment layer and add a expression control angle control. Now like I said at the outset I want this to revolve one time every 30 seconds. So if I cl alt click on the angle I can create an expression to do exactly that. I'm going to use the expression time times 12. What this will do is take the value of the time and multiply it times 12. So if you watch the angle here as we scroll through at 15 seconds it's at 180 degrees and if you scrub all the way down to 30 seconds it's at 360 degrees which will create a looping animation. Technically if you want to make sure that the looping animation looks just right you need to take one frame off of that so it doesn't quite hit 360 otherwise you'll end up with two frames at 360 degrees or at one revolution which will make the earth seem to stutter. Now in order to get the clouds on the land to rotate around using the uh, expression control here we need to link them up. So selecting your cloud precomp go to the rotation twirl it down and make sure you've got the rotation Y selected Alt click on the stopwatch. Let's make a little more room here so we can see what we're doing. Scroll up and under the adjustment layer which is our rotation control, we'll rename it rotation control. If you hit U it'll bring down the expression control here and pick whip the Y rotation to the angle control. Then hitting number or enter on your number keypad you'll lock that in. Next thing we need to do is to do the same thing for the Earth precomp. So if you'll scroll down to the Y rotation, Alt click it, and then pick whip it to the angle, hit enter on your number pad, and there you go. As we scrub through time, you can see the Earth rotates correctly. Since the atmosphere is nothing more than a solid layer, there's no need to link it to the rotation control. Let's do a, a quick RAM preview to see what we've got. It's not looking too bad, but I think we can do better. Back in our timeline, let's go ahead and ch adjust some of the settings to make this look a little more realistic. If we turn to the Earth precomp, and still under the CC Sphere dialog boxes, let's create a little specular highlight. Now, a specular highlight is the brightness that you see when a strong light strikes a glossy surface. The way we can do this in CC Sphere is turn the specular up, and as you can see it creates a little brightness here and turn the metal property from 100 down to 0. Now we've got a very bright specular spot. One of the things you'll notice if you watch any actual footage from space of the Earth is since the Sun is a yellow light source the, re the specular reflection on the Earth's surface is actually a little bit yellow. We can go ahead and adjust this to make it look a little more realistic by changing the light color from pure white to something with just a tint of yellow to it. That looks better. Next thing you'll notice is as we rotate the specular highlight is on both the land and the water. This isn't very realistic because as you know glossy objects will reflect a lot more light than matte objects will and the sea is a lot more reflective than the land. We need to take care of this but 
the effect CC Sphere doesn't exactly have anything built in to accomplish this. To do this, we're going to have to be a little more creative. Now in a 3D program, the way you would create a different specular level for uh, one side of a texture versus another is to use a mask. We're going to use the same concept here, but just apply it in a different manner. What we need to do is create two separate spheres, one for the land and one for the water. We already have a land here with the earth precomp. We need to create a water. Take the earth texture, create a new composition with it, and I'm going to call this C. Select OK. And making sure you're in the C composition, take the mask that I've provided and drag that down. The mask is nothing more than a black and white representation of the water bodies on the earth, including lakes, rivers, and the like. We're going to use it as a luma mask to mask out the land sections. Anywhere that's white will be visible, anywhere that's black will be transparent. With the earth texture selected, change the track mat from no track mat to luma mat mask. Where it was black now is transparent. You can see this clearly if you switch on the transparency. Good. That's exactly what we want. Back in the final comp, let's go ahead and drag the C composition right above the Earth pre-comp and choose Effect, Perspective, CC Sphere. One thing you need to make sure that the radius is 200 or whatever uh, value you used for your Earth texture. It doesn't quite look right yet and there's a reason for that. The problem we have is with the transparency on the sections of the earth we're seeing through to the backside. We can change this attribute of CC Sphere by going to the render section of CC Sphere, changing it from full to outside only. Now you can see your land will pop back into view. Next thing we need to do is make sure that we map the rotation to the rotation control. So by alt clicking the Y again and coming up here to the rotation control and selecting U, we can now pick whip the Y rotation to the angle and the C layer will now rotate along with the rest of the layers. Looking good. What we now have is kind of the inverse of what we want. The land layer has a very high specular uh, while the C has very little specular. So we need to change both those settings. Jumping back to the C, uh, CC sphere effect under the light, we need to change the light color to the warm yellow that we did. Good. And we also need to change the shading, drop down the ambience, bring the metal down to zero, and bring the specular all the way up to 100. Now you can see we have the same specular that we had previously on the earth map. We need to take that away from the Earth pre-comp, so we'll go open its CC Sphere effect. And the specular we can bring all the way down to something along the lines of, oh, 20 looks good. You want some specular highlight, just not nearly as much as the uh, water has. So you can see there's a strong differentiation between the sea and the lakes and the river highlights and the highlights on the uh, Earth itself. Looking good. Now we could stop there, but oh no, we're going to take this one step further. If you were to look at the earth uh, on its night side, you'd actually see light coming from the earth from cities where people have lights turned on. We're going to simulate this using a night map. Once again, I provided this in the project file. So similar to what we did with the uh, oceans, we're going to create a new earth night pre-comp. And as you can see, this is a map that has all the lights uh, mapped to it where they would be on. The problem we have is it's too bright to use for the night map for what we're looking for. So we actually need to adjust this a little bit. What we're going to do is make sure your night map is selected. Go Effect, Color Correction, Curves. And we're going to crush the blacks and blow out the lights a little bit so we'll go up and bring these the light way up and we're going to create a point and drag the blacks way down and what this will do is uh, make the bright light stand out while removing all the blue it's a little too much here I want to bring back some of the area 
And let's see. I think that looks pretty good. So jumping back to our final composition, take the Earth Knight pre-comp and drag it on top of the C pre-comp. Go Effect, Perspective, CC Sphere, and make sure it is set to 200 as well, or whatever uh, number you chose for your Earth texture. Now if we zoom in, you'll see you don't see the lights on the dark side yet. There's a reason for that. The light which is impacting how you see it is coming from the light side. We need to reverse that. So under the light, we need to change the light direction from negative 85 all the way up to 95, which is 180 degrees opposite. Now we're starting to see the, the lights on this side. The other problem we have is there's no transparency to this. We can fix this easily by going and changing the transfer mode of the night map from normal to screen. There we go. Final thing we need to do once again is map the rotation of the Y to the rotation control by hitting Alt Stopwatch and pick whipping the Y rotation to the angle control and hitting Enter on your number pad. Now as the Earth rotates, you'll see the lights of the cities show up uh, on the dark side. Exactly what we want. I think we're just about there. The last thing we need to do is create a little bit of uh, stars in the void of space so you can clearly see the Earth. I provided a star field for you. Drag it and drop it into the bottom of the composition. Now as it stands, it's a little bright and a little too colorful for my taste. But we can change that. With the star field selected, go Effect, Color Correction, CC Toner, and we're going to change the midtones to kind of a steely gray. That looks good. And there's still far too many stars for my taste. I'm going to knock them down a bit. So with the star field still selected, go Effect, Color Correction, Exposure and I'm going to drag the exposure down a few stops. Something around negative 2.5 looks good to me. And if we do a quick RAM preview, we'll see what we have. And there you have it, a 3D realistic world uh, using nothing more than the built-in features of After Effects itself. Who needs a 3D program? Until next time, this is Michael Park for CreativeCow.net saying thanks for listening and God bless.